Supposedly, Anthropic has released a model that is better than any model we've seen before, and it's called Claude Sonnet. Now, it seems like every other month we get told that there is a brand new model, and it's way better than the previous one. So in today's video, we're actually going to put it to the test. We're going to compare Claude 3.5 Sonnet to GPT-40, because supposedly, based off their own data, ChatGPT-40 only went in two different categories. Therefore, let's actually see if Sonnet is better than ChatGPT. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, we're going to be comparing ChatGPT and Claude, see who is actually better. I mean, there's been a lot of hype on this new model called Sonnet, so we're going to see if this is actually any good. Now, I'm in a new place. I just moved across the country, so if my audio doesn't sound amazing, if there seems like, you know, this is all early days for me still. I just moved into my new place. I'm going to make sure I keep fine-tuning this till it sounds good. I noticed in my previous videos at my old place, a lot of people were telling me to turn up the volume, so I turned up the volume. Let me know if it's good now. In this video, we're going to be side-to-side -side comparison and actually see which one's better. Therefore, we're going to test two major things. We're going to test the time it takes for an output, and we're also going to test the quality of the output. Let's go ahead and begin. Got my stopwatch. We got both open. Let's ask our first question. So we're going to go over a prompt suggested by Claude, and we'll start with generate interview questions. Click. This is a pretty hefty prompt, so we're going to copy this and paste it over to ChatGPT. Make sure we have 4.0 selected. I'm going to go ahead and time both here, so I'm going to first hit the Claude one. Boom. Got that output in around 9.5 seconds. Hit the chat GBT, boom, loading. And we got this output in around 24 seconds. Now time and speed isn't everything. You know, just because Claude can do it faster doesn't necessarily mean that the actual quality of the output is better. Let's actually compare the two then the structuring and the output itself. To give context, the prompt basically asks, your task is to generate a series of thoughtful, open-ended questions for an interview based on the given context. Avoid yes or no questions or those with obvious answers. Instead, focus on questions that encourage reflection, self-assessment, and the sharing of specific examples and anecdotes. First major difference that we are currently seeing is the way of structuring the output. So Claude opted for just 12 questions, while alternatively, ChatGPT opted for questions, but with a general title to give you context of what that question is trying to achieve. Furthermore, we got 16 questions here and 12 over here. Let's go ahead and cherry pick some of these questions at random to give us the best idea. So I'm going to go ahead and choose seven for both. With Claude, we got what's your approach to measuring and reporting on marketing ROI? Can you give an example of how you used ROI data to inform future campaign decisions? Right here we have how do you stay up to date with the latest marketing trends and technologies? Can you provide an example of how adopting a new trend or technology benefited a campaign you worked on? Both are good, but I will say this one has more utility and more substance in the context of asking a question. To be fair, this, these are cherry picked, so maybe we should probably stick on the same topic. Although I do like that one from Claude better in this context. Now, I noticed that their first question is actually pretty similar here, so let's go ahead and try that. Can you walk me through a multi-channel marketing campaign you've developed and executed? What are the key challenges you faced and how did you overcome them? JGBT. Can you walk me through a successful multi-channel marketing campaign you developed and executed? What were the key components and how did you ensure that they all work together effectively? I'm going to be honest, y'all, I'm going to lean towards Claude in this context as the question itself seems less loaded than this one. I mean, this one's already being biased in the sense it has to be successful. What were the key components to ensure that you all worked together effectively? While this one's much more general and not really trying to point you in a direction in an interview process and more along the lines of like, have you ran a campaign in the past and how did you overcome said issues if they did arise? Now, obviously the point of this video is going prompt for prompt, band for band between Claude and ChatGPT. There is pros and cons to each platform. ChatGPT has a GPT store, custom instructions, you know, all this different stuff that it adds on top of the value for $20. But if we're going purely based off prompt to prompt, let's go and proceed. Therefore, let's give it to little to no guidance, ask it to do a very specific task here and see which one follows it better. Now, my next prompt here may seem a little random, but its purpose is to prove to us which one follows directions best. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to generate article and the benefits of going on a walk. Simple enough. We're adding parameters here. We're going to say reach 500 words. We're going to gut check both. Use the word parks three times and end with a poem about park trails and dogs. Corbin, what is this? What are you doing? This is to show us which one follows directions more effectively. Let's try. And just for fun, we'll time it again. Let's go, Claude. That took around 18 seconds. Let's go ahead and try chat GBT. Boom. Now I'm going to be honest with y'all. I have a feeling Claude is going to be better at following directions. I don't know. We'll see though. Cause I know chat GBT can get a little bit off the rails when it comes to kind of requesting very specific things in its outputs. That took around 30 seconds. Time's not a big indicator. I know. I know time's not a big indicator. I'm just saying some of y'all may like to code faster, even if it, you know, the code's not perfect, but you'd rather get the output faster. So let's go and actually test both of these. First thing identified for each one to follow is the word count. So I'm going to go to copy Claude here. We should see a number around 500. 592. Okay. Let's try chat GPT. 657. 
Okay. Not bad. At least we're not under the limit. I did say reach 500, so it might have just taken the extra liberty to add more words. Not bad so far. Claude technically was closer to 500, but this isn't too bad here. I think the bigger one here to really see if it follows directions is if it used the word parks three times and then the poem. So I'm going to copy this. Command F. One, two, three, four, five, five times. One, two, three, four, five five times, six times, seven times. It's taking too much liberty here. So I'm actually going to rerun this test real quick. We're going to come back to these specific points here. And I'm going to say, use a max of three words or only three words or use park three times. Let's just really laser in here. So it follows it to a T. So as a side note, in order to edit, you just come up here. JGPT edit, click it. All right. So let's go ahead and try this again. Let's see if it follows the rules. I'm being very specific here. I said, reach 500 to 550 words, no more, no less. Use the word park three times and only three times. Do not use it more than this. Save send. And then based on whoever can follow those directions the best, we can deduce that long term or just using the platform in other contexts we know would follow directions better in that context. Now that might not always be a good thing. If you're coding and you don't necessarily know the correct output, you may want to have the language model have some liberty to give you more context or go down a little, a little bit of a rabbit hole. So we're going to copy from Claude here. 686 did not follow the directions at all. Let's try ChatGPT. 690. Did not follow the directions at all. So <laughs> both didn't follow the directions in that context. Let's try parks. This is a little bit more specific here. A lot of times when it comes to word count and output, it's really not that good yet as it always kind of max tokens, limited tokens. Let's try this now. Command F, Command V. Okay, we got parks, parks. Okay, two times. That's less than five times. Let's try here. One, two, three, four, five. Didn't follow perfectly either. This was a little bit closer though. Now, both follow the direction to end with a poem about parks and dogs. This one was called Trails and Trails. Very creative name, Claude. And then this one is quite literally called A Poem About Parks and Trails and Dogs. So let us walk, both near and far, beneath the trees, beneath the stars, for in the parks where dogs do roam, we find our hearts, we find our home. <laughs> I think what we can deduce from this is both models don't follow directions perfectly yet either. So it's not really like a choose this one or choose that one. This is just a gut check to see have we gotten to the point of following directions to the T. It doesn't seem so. Now, obviously, we can make this follow very specific directions to guarantee consistent outputs. This is more the context of accessing it through API and turning down the temperature. Temperature is the level of creativeness. But using it through a user interface like this, we're limited, which means that since it has a higher temperature in this context, it's going to be more creative and lead to less following of directions. Let's try one other question here. I want to see its capabilities when it comes to user interface and its ability to create stuff internally. So what I mean by that is let's see if we can create an Excel within Sonnet. Create me an Excel of the population density of major cities in the US. Hit enter. So this is the answer from Sonnet. Let's try ChatGPT. Yeah, here you go. So there is limitations to the user interface when it comes to Sonnet comparative to ChatGPT. And if you're not familiar with this, you can actually create Excel sheets, edit Excel sheets, or CSVs or spreadsheets within ChatGPT. I did a whole video on this, so you can check it out right there. It does seem limited for Sonnet for this specific use case. And I'm guaranteeing you probably a little bit of other use cases when it comes to the actual user interface itself. And as I said earlier, that's why this video is more focused on prompt for prompt rather than maybe these extra features that you would care about if you wanted to use a chatbot like this. And I could download this if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna end this prompt to prompt video, last little showdown here. And you already know, if you're familiar with this channel or why I, why I personally use these, which is to help me to code, let's see what the code looks like. So we're just gonna go ahead and throw this. It's not prompted at all. This doesn't have custom instructions. This doesn't have everything that you should have when you're coding with AI language models. If you wanna learn how to do that, check out that video. Let's go ahead and find out which one has the better code. And here we go. I think the Joker said that in Batman, the second one, The Dark Knight, pretty sure, right? Was that, uh, was that the fairy situation? I forget what part. I'm pretty sure he says, and here we go. I may be wrong on that. <laughs> okay, we're looking around 18 seconds for that. Let's try it over here. Boom. This might be a personal thing. I might be biased to be clear. Oh, hold up, y'all. I'm, I'm still timing. Okay, I'm still timing. I may be biased to say this. I've been using ChatGPT code for the past year and a half, year 0.75. I do kind of like the UI here, though. I do like it better when it comes to that dark theme. In the CSS here, I will admit as well that when using GPT-4.0 to code, I've noticed that it's not as lazy as it used to be. It will really generate an entire file. Like its outputs are pretty large now. So that took around 40 seconds. Okay, let's check it out. So we got both the front end here with the J6 of the landing page. It is actually pretty lackluster, the amount of code it put out for the from Sonnet. I'm actually not too impressed here. 
mean, comparative to over here, we have more structuring and more filler text that would be useful in the context of a landing page. So I'm not too impressed here. Coming down to the CSS, let's see what we got. CSS seems a little bit better here, but I will say that the output from ChatGBT seems to be better. For example, there is no CTA CSS class found here. You wouldn't want to use a default CSS class. Of course, you'd want a CSS class there. It is also interesting though, the direction that both took were actually pretty similar. But then again, when referencing a landing page, I bet there is just like a, you know, one, one size fits all in this context. But like one thing that was really solid here that ChatGPT did and we did not see within Claude here is a whole section dedicated to testimonials. While this one kind of went down a rabbit hole that we didn't really ask it to do about bacon flavor or veggie crunch. So now we can go and play around with this more and I probably will get more comfortable with this new Sonnet model that is supposedly so good. I've seen a ton of stuff on X. This is the best. I, I can't believe now I can actually code. What do y'all think in the comments? Are you using Sonnet now? Me personally, I'm probably gonna stick with 4.0. I'll probably play a little bit with Sonnet. Maybe if there's a question I can't really answer within ChatGPT, let me know what you think. We're back and rolling here. I was moving for the last week. I'll see you in the next video. These are two videos that YouTube has chosen. It is based off the algo. It did some data research. It saw your clicks. It saw that you stayed on that one video 10 seconds longer than you should have. <laughs> now you got these videos. So I'll see you in the next video.